as you can see, the thermostat is snapped off. That will be why they can't control it. So we'll whip that one off. Right, so we've just taken the head off this, and I don't know if you can make it out, but now the pin where it goes into the valve is beginning to absolutely piss out. So I'll just quickly wrap, just cover this up as best you can. Sometimes you've got to do what you can instantly to try and stop it. So I've put that there. I've just got downstairs the hose on the heating system. So we've just got to drop the heating system as quick as we can to stop that from leaking through the ceiling and showing downstairs. If we turn the shower on, all seems pretty well. All good there, it's coming out on hot and cold. If we turn the back tap on, it drops off completely. If we turn the hot on as well, shower completely stops. And then what we've got is these two twin basins here. If we turn the cold on each of them two basins, you can see them completely drop off. And that is just about dripping out. Welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody is doing well. This video is going to be uh, again sort of jobbing, but it's for a landlord that I do a lot of maintenance on his properties. Um, and I've just pulled up outside his property, it's just over there. It's one of the ones where you have to park about four mile away from where you're actually working and carry all your gear around and it's a bit of a pain but it is what it is um, we've been told there's a couple of radiator valves that are sticking the rads won't turn on and off there's one that's got no control over it completely and the guy can't shut it down it's down in the basement and apparently it's making his basement feel like a sauna uh, there's a water pressure issue apparently because it's on like four four floors or I can never get it. Ground floor, first floor, second floor. So it's over three floors and a basement. Um, the water pressure at the top, apparently the shower on the top floor, when you turn the tap on, the shower just completely dies. So that could be a little bit interesting getting to the bottom of that. And what else was, it? I think that was about it. I'm sure there's something else, but I think that's about it. Uh, so we're gonna go in there, have a look through and just work our way through the list of what the problems are i know i may have to shoot off and get some radiator valves because i've just looked in the van sod's law there's nothing in there so we're going to have a look at that while i've got you here install it is two weeks away i am there on the tuesday the wednesday and the thursday tuesday i'm working with thomas dudley on the tide stand so if you go in come and say hello we've got uh, a big arcade machine we've got street fighter 2 so you can come and challenge me to a game of street fighter 2 and see who wins i do know i have had PB on the phone saying to me, basically, we've got to go head to head. We've got to do a head to head on Street Fighter on the Tuesday at the uh, Thomas Dudley stand. Then on the Wednesday, the same as last year, I'm working with Snug Underfloor Heating. As I'm sure you're aware, I've worked with Snug for a good, probably two years now. Brilliant company, the go-to company for underfloor heating. So come and say hello to me. I think we've got air hockey on the Wednesday with Snug and a couple of other things, but there'll be prize giveaways and all that sort of stuff anyway. So. Tuesday, Thomas Dudley, Wednesday, Snug, come and say hello. Thursday, I'll be milling around. And if you are going, the Plumber Social event on the Wednesday night is at the Digworth Dining Club. Completely free, free food, free beer, free drinks. Um, all you've got to do is bring your installer pass and uh, you basically get in for nothing. We've got stand-up comedians. We've got three stand-up comedians um, and DJs. And it's just going to be absolutely brilliant. Where a load of people from the industry, from brands to companies to people on social media to just plumbers in general come and we just have a bit of a catch up and it's a great laugh so if you're about come and have a look at that right that's enough waffle from me uh, let's go in here get these little jobs done because it's a nice day and i want to try and finish early today it's just too nice to be working in it so let's get on with the video so we'll start off with the problems in this property. There's quite a few, so we'll work through them. The first one, I'm gonna basically start from the basement of the building and work our way up. First one is this radiator. It's just on two lock shield valves. Now the customer said that it's just red hot all the time, which it's gonna be if the valves are open. So it's gonna be a case of sort of showing them that there's no thermostatic control over it. I will put it to the landlord if he wants a thermostatic valve fitted on this downstairs one, then it can be done. But because it's a three, four storey building, you'd have to drain the whole heating system down just to change that lock shield on the end for a TRV. But to be fair, it was red hot in here. I came down and because it's the lowest point of the house, the heat was just immense. So we turn that lock shield off. We'll let that cool down. So the next one is a couple of radiators upstairs 
first floor or second floor, I think the heads on it are broken. They can't control the rad. They can't turn the heat on or off. So we'll go upstairs and have a look at that because it's red hot down here. It's like a sauna. Right, this is the radiator in the first floor bedroom or front lounge, whatever they want to call it. As you can see, thermostat is snapped off. So that will be why they can't control it. So we'll whip that one off. That's one to replace. We've got one above here. I'm assuming without even looking at it, we're in the same sort of predicament as that. So we'll go up and have a look, whip this off. And we'll go and match it up. I think it's a Danfoss one. Oh yeah. Oh no. Fuel graft. We're going to have a look, see what we can do to match that one up. seized on that is <sighs> right so we've just taken the head off this and I don't know if you can make it out but now the pin where it goes into the valve is beginning to absolutely piss out so I'll just quickly wrap just cover this up as best you can sometimes you've got to do what you can instantly to try and stop it so I've put that there I've just got downstairs the hose on the heating system so we've just got to drop the heating system as quick as we can to stop that from leaking through the ceiling and showing downstairs let's get it draining ASAP right. that's working we'll get this drain down and then the panic's off So I've been and picked some valves up. We can now get this changed over, but yeah, I took that top off and the pin popped up and the water just began to come straight out of the packing van. There was no way I could stop it. I tried pushing it down, made it worse. So ran to the van, got the hose on it, as you see, and drained the top half of the system down. We've got a floor above, so there's funnily enough, there's a rad up, uh, funnily enough, there's a valve up there that we've got to change as well. So it weren't too bad in the end, but just goes to show sometimes things like that you can just touch something that's a little bit furred up and it will just begin going but because it was on the heating system that was pressurized you know it was just coming out and coming out so we had to quickly leg it to the van get the hose on it and get it drained down but i think we're about drained down now we're going to switch it out for a couple of the ends of tea um trv valves so we'll switch that out for that one pop that one on and do the same for the one upstairs so in theory, this should be, give or take, pretty much empty, hopefully. It'll give us enough time at least to switch that valve over. So let's get that shut off. Yeah, I think we'll be all right. Yeah, there we go. I'll get a little bit of paste on them fittings. tail for the rad and then pop the new one Take head on. And I always put the decorator's cap just on top, just in case it ever needs uh, switching out. So that's that one done. Let's pop upstairs, get the other one switched out, and then we can fill the heating back up and have a look at the other little jobs. So this is the top floor valve that they can't get to work. And as you can see, I don't know if you can make that out, the pin is stuck in. You can probably just pull that pin out and loosen it off, but again, you have the risk then of it leaking out the packing gland. Because we've got the whole system drained down, I picked up another valve, so we'll switch that out. At least we then know we've got a brand new valve on there as well, so it's not gonna cause any issues. 
So there we go, second replacement TRV done on the top floor. Let's go now, fill the heating back up and make sure these are all okay. Then start looking at the other issues. Right, we've got the heating filled up now. Everything's pressurized and all is good with those valves. So that's perfect now. We can turn the rads on and off as they please. This is one of the next issues we've got and it is water pressure. So we are on the top floor of the building with three stories up. Uh, this property has got one, two, three bathrooms, various outlets for taps and stuff like that. So if we turn the shower on, all seems pretty well, all good there, it's coming out on hot and cold. Obviously hot's very slightly different, but uh, cold is pretty much coming out well. If we turn the bath tap on, it drops off completely. If we turn the hot on as well, even the pressure on the tap on the top floor, shower completely stops. We turn them off, water comes back to the shower. We're looking at a mains issue here. I'm going to do some little work out exactly how many outlets there are. So what that is going to be is an issue with the, the incoming mains. There's been a lot of work gone on around where this property is. So whether they've been tapping into the mains and the pressure's dropped ever so slightly, I'll report back to the landlord, tell him because the other two floors, showers work they work fine, one of them drops away a little bit like that, but when it's completely running on its own, they're absolutely fine. So your methods of fixing that is a, an accumulator tank, a mains booster tank on the way in. Now I've got, I'm pricing a job for a big 450 litre um, AccuBoost Salamander mains booster tank at the minute, and this is a very similar setup um, on a smaller scale to what that's gonna be. So I'm gonna speak to the landlord about uh, you know, our possibilities. I will get him to just check with Seven Trent the water board just to see if there is any known issues with mains and stuff like that. But the the tenants are in this house have said it's been like this for quite a while since they've moved in. So ground floor is fine. First floor the, is pretty much all right. But after that, the other floors coming up, you get this issue. So for me, we're going to be looking at um, accumulator booster tank going into here. But we're feedback to the landlord because that shower is no good at all. So this is the other bathroom. I thought I'd just quickly show you that we've got the same issue. This is on the first floor. So if we turn on, if we turn on the head here, and then what we've got is these two twin basins here. If we turn the cold on each of them two basins, you can see them completely drop off. And that is just about dripping out. So as you can see, that's no good. You imagine being upstairs in the next floor and that happening, but the way that these are turning on, you know, let's say using the shower and the washing machine come on, or someone turn the tap on downstairs, you're going to get that. So that sort of, for me, points directly towards um, a, a mains issue. Putting an accumulator tank in will work, but let's check first with the water boards um, and get the landlord to speak to them and check there's no issues with the mains or whatnot around here. away at the back of your mind. Now, when I checked this water pressure in this property, I made sure that the, the incoming main stop taps fully on. Did my checks on it, and as you've seen from what I've just filmed, the, the pressure's gash on it, it's, it's absolutely rubbish. So I thought I'd come up, before I did the checks, I thought I'd come up and make sure that the uh, the combination fill was clear. That was all clear, and then I went round and filmed exactly what I just showed you. Now there was something niggling in the back of my mind, so I came back up here, made sure that was turned on, just made sure the main was turned on. And then when I was looking here, I sort of thought, right, well, this bank of pipe work, even though it's all over the gaff here, this bank of pipe work is going this way. I moved some boxes and whatnot, and noticed this stop tap here. Now it was probably open three turns. Now, I thought, right, hang on, let's completely open this up, fully open, which I've just done, I haven't been in checks yet, but I've just done that and thought, is that, is that it? Is that what the issue is? So, I've just opened up that. Let's go and check. Just out of interest, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference, but it's worth checking. I might be completely wrong and it might completely change it, hopefully. 
Right, this is the top floor one. As we know, when we turn this on, I don't know what this line, what this line is, I think it's for the light. But, let's turn. See, that dropped before, didn't it? Let's turn that off. Let's turn the cold on the back. See that when I turned that on before, it completely killed, completely killed the shower. Still drops off a little bit. It's a lot better than what it was. Let's um, let's pop down and check the big shower with the twin basins in, and see where we're at with that. This is the first floor. You've got this sort of second floor level here. And then the first floor here. Right. Let's turn. So that's on. And before we turn the two basins on, the pressure really drops away quite a lot. So I've got two running. The bath stock completely bath side. So I think that tap, fully enough, has sorted out. Not on 100 percent but it is loads better. You can now have the taps running, the shower's running fine, the shower upstairs is working a lot better than it was. So yeah, that was that sneaky little stock tap. Tucked around the back of where the cat was and the boxes and all that sort of stuff. I didn't think there'd be a secondary stop to that. We've got the one down in the basement, that one, and then the combination a lot. But that has made a damn. But that's made a massive difference on it. So I still think the pressure could be upped a little bit, but as I said, there's a lot of building work on around, around here. So I'm going to, still going to get the, the landlords to check with Segment Trail, the water provider, just to make sure everything's all right. But just by opening that stop tap up fully, we've now got a lot better pressure. Exactly where we want it, basins, showers. <laughs>